Hey YouTube land, this is Josh Spoon, Producers Kitchen, and I'm here with the Arturia Audio Fuse 8 Pre. Long name, big on sound, built like a tank, really sexy accents here. Um, on the front, we've got the high Z, we've got eight knobs. You don't have to use one knob and switch between the eight, all one-to-one -one on the inputs here. We then have your uh, knob for speakers and then for your headphones. As you can see, there's an eighth inch and a quarter. So if you lose your eighth to a quarter jack and you don't wanna spend five minutes looking for it, you can just plug right in, find it after you record. On the back, we have the high Z inputs with two inserts. We'll be talking about that later. Then the other six inputs and then we have 10 outputs. Pretty insane. So I. Don't even know too many uses for that, but we're gonna be using some of the outputs uh, with as many cables as I could find and um, speakers as I can find. Word clock, um, ADAT, in and out, eight channels, um, a really uh, hard to pull off um, power supply. So if this thing's mounted into a U-Rack or something and someone trips over this power supply, they are going to fall. This interface is a very light but uh, thick unit, as you can see right here, and uh, metal all around. I think the knobs may be plastic, but they are sturdy, and I can't say anything bad about the outside of this thing. It doesn't look flimsy, and it doesn't look crappy, which is things most people are looking for, for when they have their friends come over to their studio and feel real jealous, and then also for when you spend a lot of money on something. You don't want it to fall apart. If you drop it, it probably is going to dent, but if you don't hit these knobs, you'll probably be just fine. Oh, up to 96k as well. So with all of that, let's actually get into hearing the unit a little bit. Let's talk about the software. Let's compare it to my iConnect Audio 4 Plus from 2015, I believe, version 1. And uh, yeah, we'll just get a little bit of a taste of this unit. So we already talked about the externals of the 8 Pre, now let's go to recording some sounds. So my bass is over here and I'm going to be plugging into input 1, which we can see the volume level status right over here, and we can add volume as well. I'm going to turn this guy down to start with, I'm going to grab my bass. So this is the signal as is, not bad. I'm trying to get a around negative 18 dB level so we can see the level meter here as I play. Pretty close. Probably if I play louder, it'll go up above it, but good enough. So yeah, everything's right there in front of you, which is really helpful. Uh, you don't have to always look at the computer to figure out where you are. All right, let's talk inserts. So the 8 Pre has two inserts on the first two channels. I have the bass coming in. It's being boosted or not um, through the gain here. That's coming out the back on the insert into the sub 37. Then it's being processed and then being sent back out. So as you heard, this is just the way it is. No boosting here, but over here on the sub 37, I have it an input and so I could turn that up that sometimes can get distorted depending on what the input is here then I have a multi drive after that that I can add so that's already pretty boosted and I can take both of these and boost it and you can already hear there's a lot of noise so I'm not gonna do that and a lot of the buzz you're hearing is because of my cables. Um, they're 20 foot cables, so that's gonna happen time to time. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of filter. So 
So yeah, you can run this out, multi-effects unit, boost before you get to it, um, overdrive it, do a ton of different things with the inserts before it gets into the A to D. Many manufacturers have claims about how much uh, gain can be added and all these astronomical numbers, but a lot of times that can be a problematic because when you add more gain, you get more noise. So what I decided to do was use my Sub 37, which has a latch and it will allow for a consistent tone. This is set at the lowest volume it could possibly be on the Sub 37, and then we're just gonna add gain here. And then we'll measure on the computer how much that is. So let me go ahead and turn the latch on and we'll see how much gain we get. So starting out, we have 60, very low, and then we're just gonna add. And we get up to negative 35.5, which is 29.5 math uh, in gain. And it sounds pretty good. If I silence this, we can also hear there's not a ton of uh, gain or noise. Actually, yeah, just noise kind of coming from the preamps, which is really sweet. So you can see it's a lot of gain to be added. I'm also recording on a SM57, 58, 58, and uh, this is getting good volume that I got set around negative 18, and I could do the same thing for this as well. If you had a ribbon mic or uh, uh, SM7B on its own, it gives you really good transparent sound, and um, if you had a cloud lift too, you could get like, what, more math. So. Pretty powerful, very, as they say, discreet. I'm just a bedroom guy. I do not run studios, so uh, I just know for my take, this sounds really nice and smooth, just like whiskey. Another thing that the guys asked me on Reddit was to check and see how it sounds against other interfaces. I don't have access to any others uh, except for my Audio 4 Plus by iConnectivity. So uh, here's some recordings that I made of both of the units. I recorded them at the highest level that the 8 Pre could go out before I remembered that I could have done the boost, but I don't have the unit anymore. And then I matched it so that we can hear the difference in clarity between the two of them. I know how I feel about it. I'd like to know your thoughts. This first one is the iConnect Audio 4 Plus boosted 25 dB. That's how it sounds. Second one, 8 Pre. 8 Pre starts at a higher volume with no added gain. So um, that's why I had to do this one, which is comparing the two of them setting the gain to about the same level. That's the 4 Plus. That's the 8 Pre. The little clicks you might have heard in there is the loop um, starting over again. It didn't work with the fade, didn't uh, cut it out, but you know, you get the idea. To me, um, there's a little bit of air in the uh, 4 Plus. The 8 Pre sounds really clean. Um, and let's actually, let's do this. Let's boost this even further and see what it sounds like. So, you know, just boosting the iConnect inside of Live to match the 8 Pre, you know, I, it seems that was there anyway. I don't, there's no way really digitally that could be introduced. But, um, you know, I bet you there's a few arguments that could be said about how the input is so low that the signal to noise, blah, 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 blah. But just going off of just this test right here, there is less noise inside of the 8 Pre, um, no perceivable noise compared to the 4 Plus. I'd love to hear other people's thoughts if you've compared the 8 Pre with other interfaces. 
on Reddit, two people asked me. We have Step Dance 2000 and Squash Meters asked a couple of questions, mainly about the ins and outs and the software, which is a valid concern to have. I have an iConnect Audio 4 Plus, and that thing is a beast of a connection machine, but it's super confusing. This is a little bit easier in my, uh, from my point of view. So I'm gonna run through a couple of things. I have the Digitone going into the one and two to the back. I have um, my main speakers, one of them is broken, so I have one main speaker back here. I have my uh, Audio-Technica headphones right here pointed towards my Zoom, which is a little bit off camera. And, oh yeah, these two Honeytones, which are mono, and then this uh, AP or something that is stereo. So we're gonna, we have an external in, and then we have some two tracks in live. Um, and then we have one, two, three, four, five outs. Um, I also could have done an out to the zoom if I wanted to, because this thing has eight outs plus mains. And I believe one and two and the main, the speakers, well, there's mains, which is one and two. And then there's the speakers, which I think are linked. There's probably a way to route it out and then separate them, but that's probably more than anybody needs. So let's go through a couple of examples. In the software here, you can obviously see my voice on eight. And if I was to unmute that, you could hear me out through the system. So this is the monitoring mix here. And it's just right now it's going straight out. But let's start at the top. You could see right here, um, I had, interesting. Uh, it's got the first one as an instrument, maybe from the previous time I was using it. Let's put that the line. So these are the inputs right here. You see it's already detected mic, and I'm not using any of these other ones. And I have the uh, monitoring uh, mutes off so that we can directly hear the digitone coming in. So let's just listen to that. So right now it's coming out of the headphones. If we look at the analog ins and outs, we could see that one and two are not balanced. So I can come here to add subtract groups. I can put that to um, analog input one and two. And I should be able to balance these. Okay, I just remembered I can't balance these in the software because the gains are here and they're analog. So I actually have to just turn these, make sure they're both down then inside of the unit coming out, I can then set the volume. So I can boost here or cut here. So let's actually turn this down and turn the input up. So a lot of that is coming out of the headphones. Let's turn that to So that shuts that off. You can hear it coming out of here. So you just saw I was able to change the source of the phones. So there's nothing coming from USB 1 and 2, which is the main output of the computer. Um, it's only coming from the inputs. So that's why we're only hearing this one, which is the speakers, which is coming from the QMix, which is coming from this guy right here. So you can see. All right, cool. So that's, that's the inputs. So we now know you have to control the input gain here. I knew that before, but I forgot. I'm allowed to forget. Um, so then we are able to set the uh, output monitoring here. So that's just inputs. All right, now let's go to, actually let's run that through different speakers. Almost forgot. So that is coming out of those speakers, um, but let's have them come out of three and four. Okay, I don't think I can take inputs one and two and have them come out of other inputs. I have to route them through audio software. So Arturia, please tell me if I'm wrong, but um, it's not that big of a deal if you have a computer. <laughs> Uh, I don't think that's worth complaining about. So inputs one and two. Let's solo that because I have other things on here. 
and we're going to take that in and let's spit that out of external three and four. And if you know live, you can set up your configurations to turn on and off out, outputs, inputs, all that type of stuff. I did that in my previous video with the Digitone and Captain plugins. So if you're wondering about that, check that video out. So we set uh, three and four to be the output. And what we also need to do to shut off the uh, speaker back here, the mains, is turn off the monitor in because we don't want the live sound and the monitor sound, like Ableton Live Sound or your DAW sound and the uh, speaker behind me. So we should now be able to come out of three and four, which is this guy right here. So now if I wanna come out of these gnarly guys, we'll go here and we'll see how to add more uh, monitor mixes because this is gonna probably be loud. Yep. So let's say you had a track, like I was saying, that you wanted to, on the inputs, be stuck together. We have these other analogs. I can come in, just so you see, I can come in and group all of these guys. And now they are stereo and you can control them as one. You also can edit groups. So I'm gonna undo all of these so they can be individual tracks. So you can see a little bit about the groupings. If I was recording a band or drums and a bass player, I can go to this edit and I can select which tracks are gonna go into these four groups. So I can select this one, there we go, green, green, green. Let's say for some reason you put the drums on the wrong tracks, but or not contiguous tracks, uh, you can have that set up. I could do that, and then I could do these. And they're all different groups. And then I can exit edit. And once I pull these down, you'll see they all go up and down together. Really cool feature. Okay, so just like we did with the Digitone, you could do it internally with all the live instruments. As you can see, I have this bass track on five and six. I have this drone track on three and four. This is three and four. <laughs> That's five and six. So if you listen, you can hear one on the other, one on the other. One on the other, one on the other. Sure. This is really good to be able to just record back into your system if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, we kind of talked about it on the inputs, but you can do the same type of thing for stuff that comes straight out of the DAW and do the monitor mix and all that between the speakers and all this type of stuff. So I've pulled up a video on YouTube and I want to show you a feature called Loopback, which is nothing new, but it's very cool to have on an audio interface. I've got my own YouTube video, so hopefully I don't get striked for this somehow. And I have the input on 17 and 18, which it says right here for the loopback. And I can come in and record um, audio off of virtually any source. So I'm gonna hit record here. Hopefully it doesn't do the count in. Yeah, awesome, no count in. All right, so I'm just gonna play this. We can see it recording in, so I can sample from multiple sources, um, legal or illegal, and have a little bit of fun pulling that straight in. So if you're paying for a software, you're thinking about paying for a software, but you're thinking about getting this, don't buy the software yet. If you already bought it, then I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, so there's some options here for you to be able to control just how this whole monitor mix works and be able to move a little bit uh, more seamlessly in controlling the mix. Um, I wish there were more uh, Q mixes, but with the outputs that you have and this routing you can and your DAW, you can do a ton of different things to kind of move things around in your tracks and set up different mixes for the singer and the drummer and things like that. So um, I think they did enough in the software without making it bloated. It's pretty simple. I think I, I figured most of this out on my own. And I went to the manual, I think, for editing groups because I didn't think it was the same 
thing as what I thought editing groups was. It was just a different paradigm of what they were talking about. Once I knew that, it was good to go. It doesn't take hours to use this software. Um, the software has been rock solid for me. So in conclusion, the Arturia Audio Fuse 8 Pre, great unit. Like I said, sturdy, durable, sleek, sexy, all those adjectives. Um, I really love these knobs one-to-one -one on the front, um, like I've said already, but I'm gonna say it again. All these connections, tight. I've left this thing on for a while to see if it would just like crap out for no reason. I've unplugged and plugged back in the unit. Um, it never got confused and said like, oh, this thing doesn't exist and the computer can't find it. None of that type of stuff. It's been very rock solid. And um, I definitely recommend it for people who are always weary of hardware um, because once you buy something, it's like a lifelong commitment. And if one of the inputs falls out or whatever, you got to go get that fixed. These feel really sturdy and feel like they'll be, you know, working for you for a long time. The other great things is the high Z uh, inputs here. You know, it's always good for guitar and bass. Right on here, you have all the abilities to change everything, which is really nice. And I really like the idea of you just being able to plug it in and it switches to the correct input for you. So that's one less thing you have to click. And over the course of 40 years, it'll save you eight minutes, but it's definitely in eight minutes. You don't have to think about it or having it in the wrong input and the impedance be wrong. So the gain isn't as much as my four plus, but my four plus does not have eight inputs and the ability for eight at. So I'm still thinking about um, talking to the guys at Arturia about getting this. I'm still on the fence about it because uh, it's still going to cost me money. <laughs> so, uh, you know, Hey, if you want to help a brother out, get one of my wavetable packs or something like that. I got a couple other things I'm selling. Um, you can help a brother get one of these things and also help me get to Berlin for loop 2020. So back to the audio fuse and not me, check this out, you know, guitar center, Sweetwater, whatever those uh, places that you like, cause they're available everywhere. Um, I don't know the list. I'll put it right below. Um, its current price and uh yeah check it out josh spoon bruce's kitchen this is me if you've never seen me before it's what i look like this is the channel don't forget to comment tell me what you think i should have talked about tell me what interface you think is better i'll fight you bro i don't care <laughs> <laughs> but seriously um yeah leave a comment like subscribe share notifications Tell everybody, post it on Reddit. Thank you for your time. Josh Spoon, Producer's Kitchen.